Good evening, everybody. Well, tonight we've got the great pleasure of having G Dean Jenkins with us. He's the founder of his own uh, investment education site. He's been investing for over 20 years, and he uses his own trading experience for uh, day trading and position trading in both equities and options. He's a head coach for quite a few of the investing education websites and does quite a bit of coaching in their one-on-one -on -one, uh, consulting area. So with that, uh, we're very interested in seeing what Dean's uh, techniques are. Dean, welcome to the Candlestick Forum. We're anxious to see your stuff. Okay, well, thank you, uh, Stephen, for inviting me here. Uh, this is a, this, I've been looking forward to this a lot. Thank you, traders, for, for showing up to, to uh, hear what I had to say. So I hope, uh, I hope you find it really, really interesting and useful. So again, I'm Dean Jenkins. And I'm the founder of FollowMeTrades.com. And we'll just jump right into it here. Um, my first slide, I always just give a quick disclaimer that I'm presenting this information for education information. I'm not an investment advisor. I don't know anyone's specific circumstances. So I'm not making any recommendations. And we're going to look at some live charts later on. I'm going to show some trades that I'm interested in. Um, but again, these aren't recommendations. They're they're my ideas. Okay? Each person has to decide their own risk level. Uh, tonight, I'm going to walk through my approach. I'm going to talk about three areas here. I'm going to talk about how I scan and find really the best trades that I can, the best trades in the market, how I identify potential great winning trades, and then how I manage them. Now, I'm going to go through this material pretty quickly, try and keep it really interesting. Please post your questions as we go. Make it interactive. And um, like I said, I'm going to go fast. If you'd like to download a PDF of this presentation I'm going through, um, I've, I've got a link. I think Becky is able to post that for me. So you can hit that link and download a PDF and study it later if you like. Um, again, I'll go pretty fast. But if you have questions, please ask. And then we're going to look at some live charts as well uh, in a little bit. And if you have some uh, symbols that you would like me to analyze once I show you my method, I'd be happy to do that. So let me show you the tools that I use in my chart analysis and my trading. I really, I try to keep it simple. You know, I've, I've, I've bought lots of indicator packages, been to lots of training, and, and I, I finally narrowed it down to a simple set that worked for me. You know, I think everybody's got to find their own uh, thing that works for them, but I think most people, <laughs> once you get to uh, being a pretty successful trader, you've narrowed it down to some, you know, you've simplified a lot. And um, so I use Dow theory. I find that to be really powerful. I use Elliott wave theory. And a lot of people, when they hear Elliott wave, first thing they do is their eyes roll back in their head and, and they say, oh, it's too complicated. Who can memorize all those, uh, all those different patterns and stuff? These are really simple um, version of that. And uh, part of that, I use Fibonacci retracements and extensions. And then I use the applied reality trading software from traderscoach.com. I think uh, Bennett from uh, Traders Coach has presented in this forum before. Many of you probably know him. Um, great, great company, great, great folks. So here's a very simple version of Dow theory that I use. And again, I like to keep things simple. I try to be a simple guy and do stuff that is um, repeatable. So this is by no means a comprehensive view of Dow theory. I'm really just borrowing the rules that Dow talked about. Um, back at the turn of the century, right? He, he actually published his theory, his theory um, in a series of editorials in the Wall Street Journal from 1900 to 1902 until he died. And, um, many books have been written now. But just in terms of analyzing a trend, right? what Dow said was a trend is intact. A, a, a bull trend is intact if you have a series of higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. And that's pretty simple. And that, that, that trend is intact as long as that pattern does not get broken trend is intact. It is continuing. You know, stocks don't move in straight lines. You know, they do this kind of pattern here. And then a, a bear trend is simply the opposite. It's a series of lower lows, lower highs. And as long as that pattern, you know, as long as there's a, you know, it goes down and it pulls back up, as long as it doesn't take out the previous high and it goes on to make new lows, downtrend's intact. So the theory also says that the trend changes when the pattern is broken. So the pattern is broken for a bullish trend when you know, you've had a series of higher highs, higher lows, and you get uh, a classic thing here is a lower high and then a, a low gets taken out. And that signals that the bullish trend 
has probably turned around and is ending. And um, that looks just exactly like the beginning of a bear trend. And in terms of trends, it could be just um, individual legs or, you know, Elliott wave, we call them waves, on an ongoing major trend. But we want to know when we've moved from an impulsive wave up to a corrective wave down to an impulsive wave up. So these kind of tools can help us with that. Bear trend, just the opposite, you know, if you have a sequence of lower lows, lower highs, and it gets broken, and we, and we take out one of those lower highs and put in a new high, that can be a powerful signal that the trend is turning. Okay? So I use that in my trading. Um, I use Elliott Wave, and again, I use a very simple version of Elliott Wave. Um, you can go read some books or websites, and, and you know, your head will kind of spin with um, all the different variants on patterns. You know, if you see, this pattern you see in front of you here, that's the, the basic five-wave idealized pattern. You know, that's really all I'm looking for. <laughs> and I really, I could, I could survive just trading wave three and wave five. I just want to be able to identify wave three and the impulsive waves. Now, occasionally there's a, there's a good case for a wave four, particularly on longer time frames. And um, we'll, we'll take a look at some charts where that makes sense, like crude oil. We're in a wave four on crude oil right now. Um, but I could, you know, I could make a living just trading wave three and five and using some very simple rules um, on uh, this. So very repeatable. On, you know, the students I teach are able to uh, assign the wave counts exactly the same way I do. You know, that's one of the criticisms of Elioticians, uh, you know, the Elliot geeks, is that nobody they can argue and no, nobody uh, agrees on you know, where the wave counts are. Um, the way we do this in a very simple, repeatable way. Um, my students and I, my mentor, we all we all uh, label the waves exactly the same way. Um, powerful part of an important part of Elliott waves is Fibonacci numbers. So Fibonacci numbers are interesting. Um, it's a sequence that this guy back in the uh, Middle Ages, this Italian mathematician, identified, and the sequence is zero one one two three five eight. Right, and the way you get a New number in the sequence is you add the previous two numbers, so like eight, you know, is three plus five, and three is two plus one, um, and it goes on, you know, forever. And Fibonacci ratios are the ratio of one number position to other number positions in that sequence. And when you take these ratios, you come up with 1.618, 0.618, etc. And this uh, 0.618 is called the golden ratio, and you can see this expanding set of, of uh, rectangles here, or squares, that um, are expanding at that golden ratio rate, and it, it defines this kind of snail shell, say that kind of snail shell um, form. And we find this all around us in nature, and you know, snail shells, flower petals, spiral galaxies, hur hurricanes, any complex system. Um, and, the, you know, the stock market, the, the market in general, is definitely a complex system. And we find that it quite often um, follows some Fibonacci ratios, um, that, that important things happen at different Fibonacci levels. Um, sometimes it's, it, you know, I've seen it thousands of times now, and it still um, uh, amazes me how the market conforms to these same patterns that we find in nature. So Fibonacci retracements. Um, retracements and extensions, you know, are, I'm not the first one to discover that. They're, they're used extensively in technical analysis. Um, the way this works is when we have an initial wave up, an impulsive move like this, and it starts down, quite often it, it, it ends up going down to a, this corrective wave goes down to a Fibonacci retracement level of between 38.2 and 61.8. Now, not all corrective waves hit those levels. But when they do, what's really cool about that is it can it begins to say, hey, this is following a known sequence that we can then begin to predict what's going to happen next with a pretty high degree of probability. Because if we have an impulsive wave and it retraces into a Fibonacci zone, um, then there's a really, really good chance that it's going to then extend in the next corrective wave up into a Fibonacci extension area, which is 61.8 to 100%. And that gives us a price target, which is, you know, if you're taking a trade, um, isn't it nice to have a high probability idea of where price is going um, before you take the trade? 
So we'll use uh, Fibonacci extensions like that. Uh, Elliott and Dow can go hand in hand really, really nicely. So here's the idealized version up here on top of of Elliott wave, but you know price doesn't move like that. It moves like the one on the bottom, and so you know these series of higher highs and higher lows. Um, we're, what we're really interested in is you know we want to get into a trend as soon as possible, and we want to know when it's ending. We want to know when to get out. It's really hard to call the exact top or the exact bottom of trends, but we can tell using the Dow theory when that when that sequence is broken, we go, oh, it looks like the next wave is beginning. And so we can either exit the trade, you know, or, or manage it according to that, that knowledge. Okay. So I also use the applied reality trading software. Um, it's from traderscoach.com. And there's really three key elements. There's pyramid trading points, which they really just identify uh, key higher, high, higher, low bullish sequences and lower, low, lower, high bearish sequences. And there's a particular algorithm about the ratio of the momentum to the up leg to the down leg. They give us really good um, entry points at the peaks and support levels for stops at the at the base of those pyramids. The optimum wave locator is really helpful in doing wave counts. Um, we can just see if the momentum of a trend is increasing, decreasing, or flat. And then the precision trend filter at the bottom is really just a, a yes or no. If it's green, um, it's calling for more highs. If it's red, it's calling for more lows. And if it's yellow, it's neutral. So I incorporate that in my trading. And this is really what my chart looks like. That's the only indicators I have on it. I'll draw um, horizontal lines for entries and stops and channels and stuff like that. But that's all the indicators I have to trade with. That's really all I need. So here's back in uh, last summer, back in July, using this exact same analysis technique that I'm, uh, I'm telling you about, I was analyzing the market. And I saw something kind of interesting happening. I saw a bearish pattern forming on the Dow and the S&P. If you remember last summer, from like March till end of June, it was horrible. The, man, the market was just channeling, just going back and forth. And you know, I'm, a, I'm a trend or a swing trader, so that's the worst market for me, is when it's just going sideways in a channel. But then I saw, hey, something's happening here, finally. Right? And you know, this... You know, this is almost a year old chart. We're going to look at some live charts now, but this is a great example, so I'm going to show it to you guys. So I saw that that channel was broken. Look, a new low got put in. And I saw that sequence, that Dow sequence of lower low, lower high, new low. Like, wow, that could be a trend beginning. I said, hey, if that lower high holds, and if we take out that low, we could be starting a real serious downtrend here. And this was after, you know, five years. If you look off to the left, right, we got five years of a bull market, right? We're up at the top here. And it happened, right? We got a new low. We have a high held, and a new low got put in, and boom, right? Pretty much right after that new low got put in, if you remember back uh, last August, if you're a trend trader and you were going short, um, you'd be pretty happy. It was, that was pretty exciting. And because we saw this coming, we were able to grab some really good trades. So we went short um, late July on Ingersoll Rand. And you can see we got in here on this where the arrow is pointing on July 27th. Um, how cool is it when you go short with something and then the next day it gaps down massively? Uh, it doesn't happen all that often. Um, generally it you know has to work its way down. But it's kind of fun when it does happen. And uh, we, we, we enjoyed that. Here we were we went short Goldman Sachs last summer as well. Now, it took a little, it had to work its way out, right? But it eventually dropped like a rock as well. And that was, that was good fun. So how do I, how do I scan? So I've, I've talked about, you know, a little bit about setups. We'll, we'll look at a few more. We'll look intraday as well. We'll do a couple intraday setups here. I'm checking my time, see how we're doing. I think we're in good shape. So there's three things that I do when I'm trying to find, you know, nobody wants to sit here and look through 6,000 stocks every couple of days to try and get a list together and try and find trades. So what I do is I want to, first I want to identify the overall market trend. You know, is it an uptrend, downtrend, or is it stuck in a channel? And then I want to look for sectors that are either participating in that trend, and that's fine, or they're counter trend, or they have something going on of their own. I want to find, I want to find a, a, a sector that I can narrow down into to go find trades in. And then I scan within that sector. If I can get down to a couple dozen symbols, that's manageable to analyze it, right? I can I can spot the patterns I'm looking for pretty fast. I teach my students to do that. 
you know, we can we can decide whether a chart's worth studying um, further. In, you know, three to five seconds. I was looking for a particular shape, so I scan within the sector. Right, I want to really narrow it down. So how do I do that? You know, so I look at the broad market. I like the S and P as a as a kind of a representative. Sometimes I'll go look at the you know the Nasdaq, the QQQ, or the Russell, um, or the Dow. But you know the the S and P 500 really is kind of right in the middle. That's the pretty representative. So here, here, you know, we come to the market. We come to the chart. This is June 30th, the last summer, and it's like, oh, we're in this awful sideways deal here. Oh, Jennifer, saying no sound. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Just do a quick check. Good here. Yeah, I see the meter moving. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. That threw me for a minute. I was doing a webinar once. I talked. I'd lost my internet connection. I talked to a blank, uh, the dead screen for 30 minutes. Now I'm a little gun shy about that. Okay. So June 30th, we came as this awful sideways channel thing. I go, well, I don't really want to be trading anything that's moving with the S&P 500. That's not my thing. So I want to go look for sectors that are doing something different. Right? It would be kind of counter. Okay, uh, so I, I just go, here's, you know, this is the uh, iShares list of sectors. There's other ones, there's Morningstar, all kinds of stuff, right? These, some of these sector ETFs are good, good indicators, right? I, so I'm looking at the iShares thing, and I go, oh, look at this, right? NASDAQ, biotech, healthcare, pharmaceuticals, you know, so the S&P 500, like, flat needs, you know, needs to have the... Uh, the, uh, the heart shocker thing he's put to it, so it'll do something. And and here the all this Nasdaq biotech and healthcare and stuff, it's on fire, man. Twenty, you know, all up in double digits. I'm gonna go look at that sector. That looks like it's doing something. So then I scan within that sector for price patterns. And I'm really I I really don't have two trade setups, right? There's variations on these. I only have two two trade setups that I look for. One is a channel breakout where a new trend is forming. And the other is this Elliott Wave 5, which is a trend continuation. The channel breakout has a higher average return because you, you're usually catching a new Wave 3, which is the biggest wave, biggest move um, in the sequence. But you can miss, right? Sometimes you can miss, and, and it's kind of a fake out. Uh, Elliott Wave 5 turns at highest probability, and it's the highest probability because you've got four complete waves that met strict rules before Wave 5 starts. So um, it's really falling into a very known kind of predictable sequence. So I like both those setups. So I go, I just start scanning through the charts. I'm just, again, I'm looking for a shape. And if you look at the, you know, if you just look at, stand back from it, look at the the shape here of this, you can see it had a wave one, two, three, and a, a four, that correction down, and it looks like five is starting. That's what I'm looking for, something that's got a, a very clear kind of Elliott wave sequence. Now I'll spend a little time measuring it. And I just can check this off. Go, hey, this is in the sector I'm looking for. It's moving with the sector trend. It's got a pattern I'm looking for. And, and it looks promising. I'm going to analyze. I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this. So here's how I go through and identify the highest potential winning trades. And what do I talk about a high potential? I want three things in a high potential trade. First, I want a high probability of winning. You know, losing trades is inevitable. It's part of the gig. But um, I want to keep my win rate as high as possible. Right, so I want a high probability of winning. I want really, really clear support and resistance areas. I use very strict risk management. I always trade with stops. Right? I, I, before I go into a trade, I have identified a very clear entry level, a stop loss level, and a target level. And I will never take a trade without having those levels identified. And without, when I get into the trade, I immediately place a stop. And I know people can argue about that and get, you know, there's kind of a religious belief either way on that. But um, I just think it forces discipline. Right. What kind of order you use, um, that, you know, that can be debated. But I like having a stop on the trade. There's no decision to make, right? There's just a set of rules to follow once I'm in it. And I want a high reward to risk ratio, right? I want the, I want the, the I want the probability to be that I'm going to make more money if it wins than, than, uh, than I'll lose if it fails. And if I, if I have a high win ratio and I have a high payout ratio, then I'm pretty profitable. Um, so I don't go into trades that have anything less than about a 1.2 1 to 1.3 to 1 
low to risk ratio. I really prefer they're up in the three to four to one range. So here, this pattern looks good, but I gotta, you know, I gotta measure it. I gotta work this thing out here, right? Um, so look at, here's the, you know, this wave two's down here at the bottom. Wave two's three's up at the top. It retraced down into Fibonacci retracement zones perfectly into a wave four. That's excellent, and it really looks like it's coming up off the bottom. I've got a nice wave five target zone up here. This was MRGE. Don't go looking for that symbol because it's gone. And we'll tell you why. Um, yeah, we uh, there's a link posted there, KJ, um, to download the PDF. I think there's a, you know there's a, this is being recorded. There'll be a link to watch the recording. Um, hopefully, it's good for everybody else. Okay, I'll keep going here. So we got a nice wave five target zone up here. Uh, like I'm, now I'm waiting. It's, it's coming up off this bottom. If you can see the chart, okay. Pull back a little bit. Remember my doubt here. I really want three data points. I want a high, a, a, a higher low, and then a new high. Is what I really want to see happen to prove that this trend is is getting underway, right? And then I need enough room up to the target. So it happened. There it is. Boom. I got all the data I need now. I got I got clear evidence that the trend is starting, and uh, so I got a, I got an entry price. I said I before I go into trade, I want an entry price, I want a stop price, and I want a target. And I use you know 61.8 to 100% extension on the Fibonacci uh, with the Fibonacci tool. There is is the price target zone. I use the lower one. I want to be a little conservative. I want to say, hey, at the worst case, do I still have a great return to risk ratio on my trade? Okay, so I got all this data. And then I just quickly analyze the trade. And I say, what's my risk per share? In this case, you know, it's just simple. It's the entry minus the stop. 56 cents per share is my risk. What's my reward per share? Well, it's my target minus my entry, and it's buck sixty-four. And that gives me a reward to risk ratio. Uh, you know, you just divide those two and get the ratio. It's 2.93, almost 3 to 1. I like that. That's good. And my potential target. My potential profit down at the low target is a 33% uh, profit on the trade, and it's a high target, 63. Like it. Rock and roll. So I get into the trade. I take it. I, I manage them fairly aggressively. So I like to scale out. I like to take profit along the way. Because you can be in a good trend, and you know bad news can come out. All kinds of things can happen, and they can turn around on you. Um, so I like to take, you know, put, take my position, and once I... I hit some key things here, like crossing a Fibonacci line. I will scale off. I'll take profit on one third of the shares, and then if I get a key reversal up in profit, I'll I'll take another one. Right. This uh, this was kind of a funny trade. You can see how price just it gapped way up, it jumped up, and then it went totally flat. Um, IBM announced that they were going to uh, acquire Merge for uh, seven dollars and ten cents. So it wasn't going any higher, and it was already in the target zone, so we just went ahead and closed the trade. That's awesome when that happens. Big blur to the rescue. Right? It was good. But it was a good pattern, good setup to review. Here's a more typical trade. Um, this is Tesla. And what we do is, using Dow theory as, as new highs, you know, you know, an uptrend, again, it's higher highs, higher lows. As new highs are put in, we trail our our stop up to the previous low. And what this does is keep us in the trend absolutely as long as possible. You know, I think it's really hard to call the absolute top of a trend right, without without some kind of tool. Um, but we can tell when the trend has changed. And so in this case, you know, if we had thought that was the, the high of the trend or that was the high, you know, any of these places marked HH, we've been wrong and we'd got out of the, the uh, trade way too soon and we would have given away some profit. Um, so once the trend turned, using Dow Theory, we said, oh, look, and we trailed our stop up, and um, then the trend absolutely tr uh, turned, and we were able to trail our stop up, and, and we get stopped out of the trade, and it's over, and, and we were there for the whole trend. So that's how we manage the trades. So I really look for two setups. I said that I only got two setups and a few variations on them. I look for a channel breakout, bullish or bearish, and that's where Elliott 3s often start, and I look for an Elliott Wave 5. I'll show you my rules here, my, my trade setup rules on Elliott Wave 5. It's easy to spot, and it's a higher probability. Here's the simple criteria. You know, if you're going to trade a Wave 5, you've got to have a Wave 3. And Wave 3 is pretty easy to spot. 
You don't have to be a, an Elliotician, right? It's just the biggest move on the chart. You got to see wave one and two, you know, where the, where the, you know, if it's a bullish wave three, then wave one is the first move up, wave two is the first move down, and that's the beginning of wave three. And just wave two can't retrace beyond wave one. Um, we want to, you know, in order to take a wave five trade, we got to have a wave four, and it's got to retrace down to the Fibonacci level. And then we got to have wave five prove that it has begun using Dow theory. Those are my wave five setup rules. Okay, so here's an example. This is the E mini on a two minute chart uh, last fall. And boom, now we do have a setup to catch this breakout, but I'm looking, I'm just demonstrating a, uh, um, a wave five trade. So price broke out. That's a clear wave three. You don't have to get it. It's no more complicated than that. Biggest price move on the chart is a wave three. Okay. So there's my criteria. Got to have wave three. There it is. I got to see wave one and two. Well, it's the first move up and then, and then the first move down. The first the down move can't go below the, the start of wave one. So this, this looks good. I got to have a, uh, a wave four retracement. Right? I got to have wave four retrace down to Fibonacci levels. Well, there it is. Right into the uh, 38.2 to 61.8 level. Perfect. Love it. Now we got to see wave five start. There it is. Higher high, higher low, new high. Entry. Right there. There's my entry at 1940. There goes the trade. And um, we're able to trail our stops up. We're able to scale out at key levels. And then here comes the market close. We won't be holding a day trade overnight on the futures market. So we close this thing. And you know three contracts uh, in the trade, and you know we're in there a couple of hours, make thirteen hundred bucks. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah. So Joseph's asking, why not pick the first high? Because um, that doesn't tell us that a trend has started. Joseph, I would rather give up a few ticks at entry price than, but but increase my probability on the trade. I really want high probability. I want high reward. So I'll give up some a few ticks of entry to get probability that the new trend really is underway. And the new um, a new high is only going to be one tick higher than the previous high. So the fact that it goes up into a high, pulls back, and then makes a new high, that's proof that a that a trend is starting. I hope that uh, Ron's asking, do I only look at one time frame? I generally pop up. You know, if I'm if I'm trading the two minute, I'll pop up five x. So I'll go up to the ten. What's the big trend, right? What's the big trend we're in here, and is it turning? Is it ready to correct down into a corrective wave or start a new impulsive wave? All my decisions are made on the on the time frame I'm trading, but I will I will cross check a larger time frame just to see what the bigger picture is. Those are great questions. Okay, now we're going to see if I can execute this maneuver and uh, share my screen uh, live charts here. I'm going to look at the broad market, update my analysis on that. You know, I showed you what I was looking at last summer. And we did the same thing uh, late last year. We posted a couple of YouTube videos and said, hey, man, it really looks like the broad markets are going to turn down. And, and, we, and they did, and we got some great short trades on that. So let me uh, make sure I get the right monitor. Oh, launch the application. OK. We installed that last night. Okay. Now I'm hoping you are seeing my S&P 500 chart. Can you guys see that? A couple of Y's type in there maybe. Is that good? Please tell me this is working. Okay. Here come the S's. Okay. Awesome. I think there's just a little bit of latency in the in the screen sharing, so I'll go a little bit slower. There. So this is the S&P 500 on a daily chart. Now I've I've been bearish on the S&P 500 for uh, since last summer. I think the I think the bear market started and I think it is still underway. But it's getting really really close to to uh, proving me wrong. Um. So that'll be a bummer. But if you look, um, I don't know if you can see my cursor. Yes, I can see it on the little thumbnail. So if you look back last summer, right, this big move down down to October, and then the next move up. That's a big lower low, lower high, and then the, you know, the um, end of last year and through January, worst start of the year ever, they said. Um, I thought it was awesome. I thought it was a great start of the year because we were short a bunch of stuff and we made a lot of money. Um, that's, another, that's a lower low, right? There's a lower low, lower high, lower low. This is still a lower high unless it crosses 2116.48. 
and we just closed today at 2091. It came within a few ticks. Okay, If it heads down from here, by the way, this has been a six-week run, over a six-week run up on this leg right here. Go find that any time in like the last five years. Even in that amazing five- or six-year bull market we had, there was no leg like that. Um, so this thing, you know, even if it's going to pull back and then go make new highs, um, it's going to pull back sometime. These things don't go straight to the sky um, without interruption. But I think uh, I think we're poised to go make new lows. It won't go straight down. It'll be lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. But I think we're poised to go make new lows, take out this low from earlier this year. Um, if we take out this level of 2116, I've been saying that for a long time. If we take out 2116, then um, I'm probably wrong. It's going to make some new highs. I don't think the new highs will be very exciting. Um, if they are, they will be very incremental. Uh, using these tools, um, uh, Stephen uh, and his team invited me to do some some guest blogging on the Candlestick uh, blog. So um, I was I was the masked man there. Um, so I had predicted. He said, "Man, you know, oil. If you look at oil on a weekly chart, you know, it came down from over a hundred and forty dollars a barrel." to, uh, wow, like you know, $30 a barrel. And now it looks like it put in a bottom and it's recovering. And on the longer term time frames, the recovery in oil, and by the way, look at this higher high, higher low, new high. It is absolutely taken off. We said this was underway if it crossed 3709. Well, we're at 4363 now. And if you're if you're trading oil-related stocks or oil futures or something, our projection is it's going up to 63.34 to 84.30. Now, to gas pump, that's going to be um, that's going to be bad news. But if you do this right, you can buy a new car. Maybe that will help uh, get you over it. Because uh, this this has a long way to recover from the massive downturn. This is all wave four. This was wave three down. This is wave four moving up. Uh, we have called out in that blog a couple of example trades to participate in this. Um, WLL Whiting Petro is one, you know, kind of a low price deal, about ten bucks, but it trades at you know monster volume, thirty four million shares today. And we said, hey, as the oil cover recovery starts, WLL looks like a great entry at eight fifty seven as it puts in a new high, you know, lower low lower high, new high. And so we got that entry at eight fifty seven. We're we're in this trade, me and my uh, my pick uh, subscribers. Our initial stop was down here under this low. We trailed it up already to six fifty six and. Now we're up at 10.14, so you know about 20% profit in this thing already, and it's got a long way to go. The initial target here is 17.25, and it could go much higher if oil does what we think it's going to do. Uh, Ron's making a comment that oil's been mirroring the direction of oil. Are the markets going to diverge to oil? Um, you know, it's a good observation, Ron. That um, I wonder if I got this chart still up. Let me see. Uh, so here is the E-mini contract versus oil, uh, kind of laid together in time. And uh, they were sympathetic for a very narrow period of time uh, this year, but you know, had you know, kind of highly correlated. Um, the correlation is starting to break, and that is not a historical correlation. If you look, uh, if we bump this to a weekly chart, I hope this, this loads fast and you can see it. Yeah, uh, they are not historically well correlated at all. Right? And that makes sense. Why, you know, the broad market, uh, high-priced oil is not a good thing. Right? Um, it only helps a very small uh, sector of the market. All right. So uh, this is the time where if you've got stocks you would like me to analyze, give my opinion on, use my tools, I'd love to do that if you just type them in. Do, type them in all caps. It's easier to make sure I get it right if you would. Here they come. Nugget and you guys. You know, we were in gold. Those are gold. Um, Gold ETF, you know, two X, three X kind of things. Are you guys is actually uh, natural oil? We'll look at that. Natural gas, natural oil. Okay, let's look at it. Nugget and you guys. Glad you asked about you guys. Um, we were, uh, we would, we just got out of our gold trades, and we're looking for a new pullback. Um, so this is the uh, Direxion uh, Gold Miners three X. You know, th these three X things. I like them for day trading. Um, they're really liquid. Um, they're not good trend. They're not good trend trading tools. Some of these, um, uh, they, uh, 
roll their positions and and end up in cash at the end of the day and you know you're not going to get a typical kind of Fibonacci retracement out of these. Um, this is moving obviously with gold, right? Gold has been in a recovery, and uh, you know gold had about a you know about about the same time frame that the equity market was going up in a bull market. Gold was going down, and they have that rough inverse cor cor correlation relationship. Um, so gold found a bottom. And we said uh, if the futures contract went above 11.13, that the recovery in gold was started, and it led oil. And now we got some fantastic gold trades. So uh, NUG, T Nugget, um, you know this trend is still going on. Be careful about trying to trade a trend again on these three X ETFs. You know they're really better for short-term trading, maybe even you know intraday, 60 minute, 10 minutes, something like that. So this is still underway. It hasn't really proven that it's going to. Um, uh, reverse yet it just put in new highs but it is losing a little bit of momentum and and so is gold so gold you know uh, looks like it it had a, an explosive impulsive wave and it, at some point it's going to pull back down and then and then before it goes up to the next leg and this one will pull back pretty dramatically so a little late to be going long on NUGT in my opinion uh, there Let's see if we can get back up uh, Volkswagen somebody's asking about what a debacle, huh? I just read a headline that so they're they're thinking they may have to buy back six hundred thousand cars. Scrolling down to the bottom here so I can see the uh, I think somebody was asking about uh mankind and then Starbucks will grab those. So uh I think it's M N come on. M N I can type. Yeah, there we go. It's Mankind Corporation. You know, I uh, I like it. I like it. It's kind of like that oil trade I showed you, isn't it? So this is obviously a way forward uh, move down, an impulsive move down. Uh, look where it came from. In order to analyze the trend, you got to find the start of the trend. This is actually five waves down. So this is one. Uh, this is actually uh, three, four, and five. Um, pretty sloppy, um, pretty sloppy trend. This is all the end of five down here. It really looks like it's found a bottom. It, it, you know, love it when they have this kind of real narrow channel at the end of a massive trend, and then something that pops. It's kind of a fry pan bottom. It's got that curve to it. Love this new high, right? This is low. If we put in a new high. The entry on this trade would be here. Now the software is saying that could be um, a, a bearish pyramid, but we got you know we've got divergence in this as the as the trend was still coming down, the momentum was coming out of it, the bullish momentum's going up. So <coughs> excuse me, it really looks like a new uptrend beginning. The entry on this would be at about uh, 20, two, 228, and the initial stop. I would put it at the at the bottom down here. I would start conservative on the stop, let it get a good pattern going like we did on whiting, and then you know, let it pop up new high, new new high, new higher low, new high, and then start trailing up to these previous uh, support levels. So that's actually a pretty nice one. It's not ready yet. I'd wait for this this high here at uh, 228 and a target on this one. You know, give some context to why I like it. Target on this one in terms of where it could retrace to if it really gets underway is here up to um, 408 to 632. So waiting for a 228 entry to confirm the pattern um, to get a you know a four to six dollar trade um, not too bad right it's worth waiting. It's important to let the trend confirm. Uh, Frank's asking about Starbucks. Let's look at Starbucks. We're actually short Starbucks right now, and it is testing our patience. So we had a really clear five-wave pattern up, and then a the beginning here of a new trend down. Really, really liked the, the downtrend here. And here's the new wave three, uh, the four. We did have evidence of five starting. Um, we went in down here, so. You know, full disclosure, we don't win every trade. We went down 
No, we went short here at uh, this dash blue line, uh, 56.66. Um, we had a target zone down here that looked pretty good. Um, we're, uh, we've come, you know, had near-death experience. It's almost stopped out uh, a couple times here. You know, if Starbucks puts in, if it goes back down to this level, takes out these, these support levels here down at 56, 56, 56, 56, even if I got stopped out by a few ticks, I'm back in this thing, right? This has got a nice bearish pattern going. Um, and, you know, this is moving pretty much, this is pretty much the same time frame that the broad market has been going up. When and if the broad market turns down, this is going to turn down with it. When it does, you can see when, it, when Starbucks turns down, baby, it gets explosive. And so that's my deal on Starbucks. I still like the short. We may get, we may get kicked out of it, but we'll try it again. Yeah, let's do look at Volkswagen. Has it gone to zero yet? Man, what a story on them. Okay, obviously in a downtrend since the big news broke about their uh, their emissions problem. And it was in a downtrend before that, it looks like. I think this is where the news broke, right? Real interesting, when, when prices gap, there's a tendency, when there's a big gap up or down, there's a tendency for the gap to fill, sometimes to Fibonacci levels, and really, let's call that whole thing kind of there to there. Um, and it did. It, it did make it into this Fibonacci retracement zone with this gap fill. And when it... You get a huge gap and a Fibonacci retracement zone. The typical next move is down. So uh, too late to be be trying to short Volkswagen. I think the momentum's coming out of it. And there's no way we're going long with this. You know where it's at now. So interesting to look at, but there's no trade there for me. KJ saying, I may have missed it, but what are the little triangles? Yeah, those are part of the applied reality trading system. KJ, if you if you download the presentation, it, it talks about them, and if you're going to watch the recording. Pyramid trading points from the applied reality trading system. Okay. Keep going down here. Hey, you're welcome, Bob. Yeah, happy to look at that. Um, somebody's asking about Yahoo. Yahoo. Wait, so you guys think so? Who, who's going to buy Yahoo? Verizon. Sounds like Microsoft's not interested. Apple. Apple's not going to buy. You just want to see the symbol, huh? Nancy's asking typical time frame length of my trades for my stock picks, my stock and option picks. Um, uh, Nancy, it's it's four to six weeks is my typical time frame, right? And I like to get in, catch a good leg. Joseph's asking, is there a way to to uh, download the presentation? Absolutely. Maybe Becky, could you could you hit the link again there to download the presentation? So Yahoo's obviously been in a downtrend um, for a long time. Surprisingly, so the trend started back here in November of 14, and it really looks like um, that's all. That's all wave three. There wasn't a, a significant enough retracement back up to call a wave four yet. So this move up right now is wave four, and we'll just do a quick. You know, where would it have to retrace to? Right, so it's wave four could be ending. And so we, it's not ended yet. It's not ended yet. And you know, we've got to use Dow theory to figure out when it ends, when it puts in a new low, lower high, new low. But let's say it, it turned down from here. If it turned down from here, which it has not, right? This is just a uh, prediction. So if it turned down from here, where would wave five, where would the next negative wave go? And that would be 22.33 to 12.58. Okay. So you got to hold in the back of your mind, right, that uh, Yahoo's for sale and, you know, with a pending probable acquisition, would you want to be getting, you know, getting short on something that's maybe going to bring 30 bucks in the market, right? I'm a technical trader. I... I I went to business school. I can read a balance sheet. I can do fundamental analysis. I did it for years, and I found it to be the most frustrating thing in my life. You know, great company, good products, good earnings, 
you know, good prospects, good management, stock ought to go up and it tanks. Or, or just the opposite, you know, a company like Volkswagen with horrible news and it goes up. Um, I think, uh, you know, I think fundamental information matters, but I think the reality of price action is all of that information being digested and acted upon by the collective market and that, the you know, this is reality. Price and volume are indisputable realities. The pattern they form are indisputable, right? Corporate earnings statement sometimes is the finest fiction written in the in the modern era. Right? You got to know how to read footnotes and, um, and and ultimately, who you know, earnings are great. Who cares? What does the market think? What are they going to do? And they just tell you. They just the, the chart tells you a story. So, um, but I do pay attention to big news, right? I would not be excited about shorting Yahoo, knowing that uh, the company's for sale. The board wants to sell it, and somebody's going to. You know, probably step up and, and get the thing. That's just disruptive. Why would I? Why would I go try and trade something that has that has known volatility built into it, known disruption built into it? Right? It can happen. We don't know about it. That's bad enough. But when we know it's coming, right? Why? Bob's asking to determine the starting point for waves. How far back in time do you go um, to the to the beginning of the trend? So I'm analyzing a downtrend here in in Yahoo, Bob. If you want to analyze a trend, you got to find out where it starts. So it could have been a year ago. In this case, it was uh, November, right? Where's the beginning of a downturn? What's the high? It's the high before it started down. Well, I, I keep it simple. Well, I discussed cr uh, scanning criteria. We went through it a little bit earlier, Ron. Um, uh, I, I went through my trade setups and then how I kind of narrow myself down to. Uh, a manageable set of list of stocks to look at it. So if you want to download the presentation or watch the recording, maybe maybe catch that. Okay, we're at 5:48. I'll do one more, and then uh, yeah, you're welcome, Bob. You bet. Let's do CRC for Dave, and then uh, I'm gonna start wrapping up here. CA Res Corp. Well, and I have no idea what they do. I always like to know what sector of stocks and what they do, right? Um, the trade bay, I always check volume, 18 million, so it's a pretty liquid deal here. Um, CA Res Corp, interesting. So there, there is no more data on this, at least that I have loaded. Maybe the, maybe the thing was issued back here. But we can analyze it from here, right? Massive downtrend. The, the downtrend started right here. Bob says, totally agree. Price and volume are the truth. Absolutely. They're indisputable, right? They happen. Um, so this, uh, let's see if this was five waves. This is an interesting way to do it. So here's wave one, two, right? We're wondering if this is a four. And uh, you know, by golly, it is. It just made it. It just made it into the zone. And the reason we want to know is that a four, we want to know if this is a five, we want to know if this is, are we going to be, are we trading wave four here or is this a whole new sequence up, right? That, that's an important thing to know. So here's a, here's wave five. And Remember I said how astonishing it is, how magical? This went right into the target zone, right? It went right into that target zone, went right into the price target zone, just barely. And that's why we use a conservative measure. Now it looks like it's taken off, right? So this, this was a five-wave sequence down. And now it looks like a new sequence up is starting. But I said I like wave five trades because there's four waves beforehand that fill neatly into the pattern. And the next one is pretty highly predictable. So... Uh, we got this move up, this move down, this move up. It has not taken out this previous high yet. This thing could really get underway. We got the green PTF calling for more highs here. So if we take out this high, it looks like it's at about 217. I would get into that at about 217, maybe a few ticks above. And it's well enough developed that I would have my initial stop down here on that one. And we could look. You know, the first big resistance area is up here. So if you called that a target right before that big resistance area, just be conservative. You got in at 217, and you know, first resistance to maybe slow it down is 485. It's, you, know, you double your money. That's not bad. It could go a whole new sequence up. So that's kind of a nice one, CRC. I'd want to check the sector and make sure it's based on a commodity or something, that, what's going on there. Um, I said I'd do one more. I'll do one more after the one more here. we got to look at natural gas. Natural gas is lagging oil. It looks like it's getting ready to do the same massive downtrend. It's already put in a new high here, right? So I'm getting ready to go scan aggressively in the natural gas sectors for companies that are going to participate in this recovery. And it's, it looks like it, you know, this 
Breakout was 2082. The recovery could go 3.4 to 4.4. Be dramatic. All right, let me flip back to my slides. Make sure that uh, the, uh, that's working now. Um, wow. Screen sharing. Uh, da, 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 da. I need to stop this. Oh, here. Yes. Now the slides. Can you guys see the slides okay now? Good. Okay. So here's a couple suggested next steps. Um, if you if you like the material that I just presented, it's pretty simple rules. You know, it takes practice to learn it and stuff. But you know, download the PDF, watch the video, um, give it a shot. Um, please consider testing out any new system you test. Right, you should be doing it in SIM or demo account. Don't put real money into something new. Right? You can learn some very expensive lessons that way. You know, every trading system is a combination of the system's parameters, its rules, and the person trading it. We all have different psychology, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, if you want to give it a try, give it a try in SIM. And if you're interested in following my stock picks, if you like the method I'm using, man, we're getting some good results here. My stock pick service, uh, here's my last several years, 2013. We we our portfolio returned 57.3. You know, the market was was going pretty good then. Nice strong trend. 2014 it was 37.4. Last year it was a tough year. Channeled half the year. Um. Uh. But we still pulled out a 28.63. This year we're up 20 percent already. Um. And we're doing really good. So my stock picks. I publish them before I take them to my subscribers. Um. I publish. Specs on the stocks. I publish specs on the option contracts. So you can trade them either way, with option contracts, or just outright buying or selling the shares. Or I give one to two a week. It's just the best of the best, right? Uh, option contracts. I update every week. I give a video where I go over the charts, narrative on the trade, moving our stop levels, scaling out for profit. You know, just we manage the trade. I'm there the whole way. I give you updates through it, and then, you know, midweek if anything significant happens, and um, you know, for the Candlestick Forum folks, you know, we're here. Uh, I offer make a special offer. You know, the list price on this thing is one hundred twenty-seven dollars a month, and it's a good value. There are people paying that and more than getting their money back in return. Um, but I'll give you a twenty-three percent discount of only ninety-seven a month for as long as you stay subscribed, and you can get a ten-day trial, ten days for seven bucks, and I'll give you a hundred percent money-back guarantee. So you get to try it basically for free. You can jump in, give it a shot. Um, for seven bucks, ten days, that's two weeks worth of picks. And if it's not your thing, you just send me a note, give me a call, say, yeah, Dean, um, give my money back. And uh, no hard feelings, no questions asked, give you a refund. Um, but if you like it, and most people do, most people stay with it, and um, they're, they're loving it, um, it's, a, it's a good deal. I got the URL on the screen, and, and Becky just posted the link to if you want to hit that. Um, I've made a little tiny URL that you can read real easy there if you wanted to. And again, the link is on the screen there. You can read more about it, and then you can give it a shot. You know, seven bucks for you know, two weeks worth of picks. Check it out. See if you like it. All right. Hey, William, thank you. Per month, I per month. So I do about one to two a week, so that adds up to four to four to eight per month, and that's pretty average. You know, the last four to six weeks, we usually have eight to ten positions on. Bob says seven bucks. It's a no-brainer. Tell them, Bob. Tell them. Uh, Kevin, I think there's a link to the recording going to be emailed out um, after it's you know rendered and and all that stuff. I think uh, Jim Cooper, the recording guy, had said that's coming. Okay, well that's everything I've got. I had uh, to present. Awesome that you guys engaged and asked a bunch of questions. It was fun looking at your stocks. Um, I think I think we're good to go here. So uh, yeah, back to you, uh, Stephen. I think. Are you going to wrap it up or something? Not sure. I'll, if there are any questions, yeah, thank you guys for your comments. That's awesome. Yeah, Paul, you're welcome. It's good to be here. I enjoyed it. Great group. Oh, Becky or Stephen... Who am I handing back off to? <laughs> we'll just hang out here for a minute.
Don says, are your option picks directional or spreads? Directional, Don. I, I keep things simple. So, you know, I, I'm a trend or swing trader. I try to identify trends on a chart. Is it going up or is it going down? And for me, the best way to play that is with, you know, if it's going up, I'm going to go, go long calls. And if it's going down, I'm going long puts. All right. Thanks, man. Peter, you are welcome. Tim? I had a little bronchitis. I was hoping I could make it through this without coughing my head off. Um, but good meds were the answer. William Williams asking, "Hey, are your returns based on the options or the stocks?" They're they're, uh, they're both. So I I publish um, what I actually did with my own money, William. Uh, for the most part. If you go to my website, which is uh, followingtrades.com, www, you can see my logo up on the top there. That's my website. And on the website, you can see that the returns that I have listed there. I need to catch it up. But on that on the home page, there's a thing showing the returns. And underneath it, there's some buttons to click where you can go look at the exact trades I took um, in, in previous years, this year and previous years, it lists every single trade that I that I used in um, coming up with that total there. You know, the, the, the symbol, the entry date, the entry price, how long we're in it, how much we made. Yeah, Peter, got your message. Um, if you uh, if you hang on to the presentation, the link is there, or just send me an email. Anybody can send me an email if you got a question. Dean at followmetrades.com. Happy to, happy to field your questions. Yeah, you bet. Ten calendar days, Nancy. The, the 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 stock pick trial is for ten calendar days, but that that crosses over two weekends. I publish the picks on a, on Saturdays. You get a chance to see them for two weeks. Uh, Dean, thank you very much. That was good stuff. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me, Stephen. Awesome. Yep, everybody, try it out. I mean, for seven buckaroos, you pay more than that for two uh, Starbucks coffees, and you'll get a heck of a lot more valuable uh, information. So uh, try it. Dean is trades his own uh, method doing extremely well you might have the right method for you so with that everybody have a good evening dean thank you very much this was good stuff we'll see everybody in the chat rooms <laughs>